one of the most frequently occurring examples of functions, at least in the context of topology, occur in the case of paths. And paths are very special cases of continuous functions. And they give you a lot of information about a space. So let A be a subset of, let's say, Rn. A path in A is a continuous function of the form it's a function defined on a closed interval into A. So here A and B are numbers and A is less than or equal to B. This is, ex this is what the definition of a path is. And it's very geometrically intuitive what a path should be. Here's my subset A. Let's say A is some blob like this. Maybe it's a bunch of blobs. Then a path in A is a continuous function. Here's my domain. It goes from A to B. And I can draw the image, for instance, something like this. Let's say this is gamma of A over here, and here down here is gamma of B. It's very important that we assume that this function is continuous. Otherwise, we wouldn't call it a path. Now, another very closely related definition is a subset such as above, A in Rn, is path connected. This is another property of subsets of Rn that we haven't yet discussed. We've talked about what it means to be connected, compact, bounded, closed, open, and so on. So a subset is path connected by definition, if and only if, for every pair of points x and y in A, there exists a path in A starting at x and ending at y. Now, I want to be totally clear what this means mathematically in terms of formulas. This would mean, i.e., there exists an A and a B in the real numbers with A less than or equal to B and a function, gamma, a continuous function, and a continuous function, gamma from AB to A with gamma of A equals X and gamma of Y equals B. This is what it means for a subset to be path connected. So in this picture above, um, it turns out, I mean intuitively, let's just think intuitively that um, such a thing would not be path connected because I wouldn't be able to continuously draw a path from here to here without leaving the space that I'm looking at. We'll give explicit examples in a moment. And before we do that, let's talk about more general class of examples. With the following theorem, we have every convex subset of Rn is, in fact, path connected. Now, this is a little clear. Um, and the reason is because the straight line path exists between any two points in a convex subset. So the straight line path is an example of a path. And it's, in fact, the path from 0 to 1. So for any two, this is a fast proof, given x and y in our con convex subset, let's call our convex subset C, 
So we should say let C be the convex subset at the beginning. Set gamma from 0 to 1 to C to be the function gamma of T equals 1 minus Tx plus Ty for all T between 0 and 1. And this is an example of a continuous function. That's something you should check. Um, and this is the straight line path. That comes for free from the definition of what it means for C to be convex. So this is an example of a path-connected subset of Rn. More generally, we have the following rather useful theorem. Every path-connected subset, let's say, well, of Rn, is connected. And the proof of this, um, I'll give you a proof sketch, give you more of the idea, and you can look at the notes for the precise proof of this theorem. First, suppose that I had a subset A. Let's say, um, yeah, let's say A looks something like this. And suppose that, to the contrary, that uh, there exists open sets that are disjoint and separate the set A. So let's say this is our subset A of Rn. And we have two open sets, U and V, whose intersection with A gives us disjoint open sets that separate um, A into two parts. And now suppose that I had a path. Let's draw this in another color a path in this set between two points, one in U and one in V. Remember, by assumption, because this subset is path-connected, I know such a path exists between any two points. And because U and V are not empty, I know there exists some X here, and there exists some Y here, and by assumption, there exists a path from x to y. Then what I can do is, I can restrict this open set to this side and pull that back. So I'll pull back, so let's call this function gamma, and I'll pull back gamma inverse of u, obviously intersect a. And that'll be an open set here. This comes from the definition of continuity, an alternate definition of continuity that says a function is continuous if and only if the inverse image of any open set is open. Similarly, I can pull back the open set V intersect A, and that'll be an open set as well in my interval. Now by assumption, these are also non-empty. However, we know a theorem from ordinary analysis of just a single real variable that the interval is connected. Therefore, such open sets do not exist, and we've reached our contradiction. So this gives us a contradiction. That closed intervals are connected. So what are some other examples of um, connect, path-connected sets, uh, for example? So one of the examples that you can look at in the notes for uh, S1, which is the set of points x, y in R2, whose square is equal to 1. This is an example of a path-connected subset of R2. And also the idea is rather simple to see why it's path connected. If I take any two points, let's say this one here and this one here, 
I can just look at the path that goes, let's say, to be consistent um, counterclockwise. And I would have to actually write a parameterization for such a path, um, but we can do that and I'll leave that to you as an exercise. And secondly, you should prove that this parameterization is in fact a continuous function. And because such a parameterization is a function, so we'll have to construct some gamma between some numbers to R2, we know that this function is continuous if and only if its projections are continuous. So you'd have to check that each of the projections are continuous, and you can sort of see that these projections are some combination of sine and cosine functions. So we have several notions of connectedness now. We have connected, convex, path connected, and we know that every convex subset is path connected. Here's an example of a subset that's path connected but not convex, as we saw a couple of videos ago. Similarly, every path connected is connected. What about the converse? Is every connected subset of Rn path connected? Now, if we look at just an ordinary real line, we know that this is true. Remember we had this theorem that said not only is every connected subset of R path connected because it's an interval, it's actually also convex, which is much stronger. However, in Rn, there are counterexamples that go in each of these directions. And one of the interesting counterexamples is probably related to, is, is related to a function that you've probably seen before. And this function is uh, the topologist sine curve. So define a function g from r to r by g of x equals 0 if x equals 0 and sine of 1 over x otherwise. Now this function looks pretty wild. Um, if I can maybe give you a vague sketch of it. It sort of looks normal like a sine function outside of some region, but it's sort of the oscillations are getting slower and slower and slower. And then as you approach the origin, the oscillations increase dramatically. And there's sort of an infinite oscillation going on as you approach zero. And this happens from both sides. And sine, last time I checked, is a, an odd function, so I think this flips over. Um, looks maybe something like this. And it just increases um, its oscillations as you approach the origin faster and faster. So if I take the graph of this function, then A, which is defined as the set of points x comma gx, such that x is an R, Then the graph of this function, which is this subset of R2, is connected, but not path connected. So there are examples of connected subsets of Rn that are not path connected as long as you allow n to be greater than or equal to 2.